everyone. Welcome. I see you in the chat. Welcome from everywhere. Thanks for joining me today in my studio. It's a beautiful day here in Portland, Oregon. So today I have a, a couple little surprises. I'm going to switch up the demo just a little bit. I'm going to start out by doing some little color studies, which is something that I don't always do, but I really enjoy when I do them. Um, announcements. A couple of things. Uh, I want to make sure that everyone that's watching, you can subscribe now. There's a subscribe button now on the channel. So make sure, sure you subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications. Mom, <laughs> remember to do that. So um, that would be great. It really helps us out for to have more subscribers. YouTube um, gives us little goodies for the more subscribers we have. So love that. If you could do that, it'd be awesome. Let's see, what else? Um, monthly painting lessons, pastel painting lessons online is year two is coming really, really soon. So um, me, make sure you head over to my website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com and check it out. It's really exciting. We've been working super hard for the past year on brand new content. Uh, and we have new camera setups and so everything we've really upped the level of everything in year two and we also are going to be having some special goodies in year two for subscribers to the monthly lessons so okay so be sure to head over there and check that out also lessons in watercolor and oil over there on my website so be sure to um, check that out and uh, yes and buying things over there on my website helps me to be able to do this. So just think about that a little bit. Okay. And I wanted to start out today with a, a really quick quote from this uh, book, Taking Flight by Kelly Ray Roberts. And I think it's very apropos for the moment. And then I'm going to get started painting. It goes like this. Out of the welter of life, a few people are selected for us by the accident of temporary confinement in the same circle. We never would have chosen these neighbors. Life chose them for us. But thrown together on this island of living, we stretch to understand each other and are invigorated by the stretching. And Moro Lindbergh. So I thought that was really pretty good for today. Okay, so how am I going to start with these uh, little studies that I have planned today. So you guys that typically follow along, um, I really highly encourage you to, to do the little studies. Um, if you want to skip them, that's fine. But doing these studies, talking about stretching and um, it being invigorating oneself, I'm trying to do that also at my easel all the time. I'm always trying to nudge myself forward I don't really want to stay in the same place as a painter, as an artist. I want to be growing and learning always. I think that's one of the most exciting things about being a painter. So these little studies help me to do that. They push me in maybe some unexpected directions that I would not have, um, I would not have headed to had I not done them. So I usually am starting out when, when I'm painting from a photo reference, I'm starting out usually with something that, that feels like most, um, most literal, most representational to the photo. And then from there, I'm going to start with what are the, what are the possibilities and start exhausting possibilities as I move forward. So that's what I'm going to do a little bit today. All right, and I'm going to start out with some watercolor. And... Um, those of you that are taking the watercolor sketching workshop know how fun a watercolor is. Um, so I have my little uh, composition, and I know, I know, it's, uh, it's uh, another stream, <laughs> which I really love. I love these streams. So uh, I, I know I've, I've done quite a few of these for the live streams, but I'm going to try to switch it up just a little bit. I'm going to do this square format. And... I'm just going to start in with just a, some little idea, very, very simple abstract shapes, right? It's very, um, very, very simple. 
I have these rocks in here. I don't know that I'm even going to really think about those at this point. I'm just thinking about what are the big overarching shapes, what's happening there. And I'm going to start in with some watercolor. Let me grab this. I'm going to bring it over here with me. And maybe I'll look at the photo a little bit to, for this first one, right? What are these shapes in here? I've got to get my water a little bit closer. Let the water do the watercolor do its thing a little bit, which is amazing. Some darks for this shadow shape. So super playful and just exploring what are the possibilities. Now this paper is pastel matte so it takes the watercolor in a kind of particular way um, that it, it lets it, it bleeds quite a bit But I know that going in. All oh, beautiful, cool, wonderful stuff happening there. Love it. Now, I've got these. I, I want to do some more studies, so I've got to get, the, get it to stop bleeding a little bit. Now, I'm thinking about blue sky up here in this one. For this one, do I want that mountain shape back there? Some idea of it. Nice. Okay. So that, that's pretty cool. Can you remind everybody what paper you're using? Yes. Again, this is pastel matte. Um, the question is what paper? <laughs> Obviously, it's pastel matte. And it see, it takes the watercolor in a kind of particular way. It does these kind of blooms with these kind of interesting edges. And that's very typical for this paper. OK. Let's try another version really quick, just super, just move, moving right on to another version of this. Sticking with the same kind of composition. This is a little bit like doing variations, but this is setting me up nice to um, be able to do a larger piece. So this time, I think what I'd like to do is go easy does it on the value, so lighter value situation, so higher key overall. So by higher key, I mean everything is on the light side of the value scale. So not so much strong contrast. Questions? Well, um, somebody asked about pastel matte and if it damages your brush. Oh, good question. That is a good question. So it's not quite as hard as, um, say, uh, uh, really hefty UART or Wallace paper, but it's still got a tooth to it. And so I, right now I'm using my, see, this brush has a little piece of tape, white tape on it. It's the brush that I use for this. So I'm, I'm careful about that. 
And just a little uh, heads up, if anybody's having any trouble with the feed, just uh, refresh your page and it probably should be fine. Yeah, if, you're ha if, you're, if it's blurry, if you're having trouble with the feed or it's blurry or skipping, just refresh because we should be um, doing just fine on our end. Okay, so this one, I'm thinking the sky may be um, really light in value up here. Maybe just a hint. So really high key, high key. Here's a good question. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to go with the square format for that composition? The question is, why did I decide to go with a square format? I love squares. I think that they're a really dynamic um, um, proportion to compose in that offers a, a, a um, it's just different. It, so you're, you, you are orient yourself to the, to the space that you're creating. Because we're, we're making an imaginary space here, creating an illusion of space. Uh, so you orient yourself differently. Because as humans, we're looking out into the visual field with a certain cone of vision that's not square. It's a rectangle. So when we take a square, we're sort of honing that down in a particular way that I find very interesting. If that makes sense. OK, another. Another uh, version of this, let's try, let's try something a little more uh, earth tone palette. Got lots of emerald tones in here. This little scene's got a lot of earth tones in it. So let's stick, stick to the, the, let's see if I've got some, I love this indigo. a little earthier and add some Here's a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, are you doing the thumbnail to determine what color to use when going to pastels, or are you doing this for the underpainting purposes? Both. So, um, so the question is, am I doing this because um, for the for the uh, what was? It? So, so they want to know to determine um, to determine what color to use when going to pastel. Yes. Um, both. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it to experiment with what I, what I want and, and just to be able to move away from the photo reference a bit. Oh, I was going to do earth tones and I got carried away here. That's when talking and painting doesn't serve me. Um, both. I want I I want to to do both and <laughs> I can do two things at once. I apparently not talk and, and paint <laughs> sometimes. Okay, so let me pick something. I want I want a uh, Payne's like a Payne's gray for back here. Payne's gray has kind of got that blue, a little bit cooler. So it's earthy, but it's cooler. Maybe, oops, that's pretty emeraldy. That's not earth tones, is it? Let's get something a little bit more like this. That's wild. That's way wilder than I had in mind. So I'm going to pull that out.
Okay. And also, can you remind everybody what type of watercolors you're using? Yes, the question is what kind of watercolors. These, are, these happen to be Winsor Newton. Um, it's a half pan. Let me get a little sky in. So now when I'm looking at these, okay, I started out with this one, and it's, you know, it's kind of wild. Um, and this one here I was thinking of, of uh, a, a high key. Here I was thinking kind of earth tones. And the, the, to me, um, this one is, ends up being closest, actually, to the reference, um, which is kind of interesting to me. Now I'm going to do one more just for fun, and then I'm going to get started on painting. And this one, I'm just going to get something in. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to put color down. Now I've got stuff intervening in here. Also, uh, do you always use watercolor for your underpainting, or do you sometimes use other paint? The question is, do, do I always use watercolor for underpainting, or, or do I use other types of paint? I use other types of paint. I really like fluid acrylics for underpaintings. They're really chromatic, um, and so they have a lot of punch, and I th they're really fun to work with also. Um, so I'll use those a lot. Oh, I like that. That's nice. That's really nice. And then this is um, quinacridone um, gold. Such a neat color and watercolor. cast shadows out here. Little punch. Okay. Now I've got a lot of bleeding going on there. If I was doing these um, for myself, I'd probably do them um, on a desktop, on, on a tabletop, so I didn't get so much bleeding. But actually, that's kind of nice. The bleeding is, is fun. OK, now let's do one more thing before I start with pastel. Uh, I want to. Come in here with a little pen. Ah, uh, they're wet still. Are they all wet? They're all wet. Do you want to fire up the uh, eh, air Not so much. No, I think I can. I think I can work with these the way they are. So let's move this over. Kevin, can you tell me where to put? Oh, where to put this so that they can still see it? That might be a problem. But the reference photo's got to go up there. That's going to be, that's going to be tricky. You know what? If I put this here, you can cut to it every now and then, maybe. Yeah. There. Okay. Right. Yeah, I can take the reference photo off from time to time. Yeah. Those are neat. All right, I love it. Okay. Now I have to decide. Now there's aspects of all of them that I like, so now I have to decide what it is I'm going to do. I might need the the hair dryer actually when I am done doing 
this part. And um, I do want to do one thing. Just sort of like to measure so I don't get too carried away with size. Okay, so this is um, eight and a half. So if I make it, if I come here, that's eight and a half, nine and a half. And if I, yeah, I'll come like this. What is that sound? Oh, your phone? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. That's weird. Okay. So there's my little bounding box. I, um, I like to have this area to make marks and to um, practice. Um, I'm always kind of surprised when people... Okay. Oh, good idea. I want to look at it, though. Yeah, I'll bring it back. Okay. And we could, we'll, we'll yeah. post a photo of this. Yeah, definitely. We'll definitely post a photo of those little studies. So I like to have this little area here. I, I don't like to paint on boards or paper right to the edge because I, this is important to me. When I'm painting, I'm building relationships with the values and the colors. And also, I'm going to test out my pastels. They're, they're all different brands and shapes and sizes and they make different kinds of marks so I want to test them out before I get up here that allows me to stay thinner overall because if you're if you're actually practicing making your marks on your real thing then um, there, is that good yeah okay tight tight yeah, in, tight in there okay and I'll periodically uh, okay okay awesome sorry to throw in another little oh. bit of complexity for you there. All right, so let's just, same thing, I'm going to get my composition in here. I don't need to get all worried about it. I like these trees. I don't want them too close to this edge here. If I, if anything, if I, I, I could run them off, but I, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep them in, so I'm going to keep it well in. I've got, I've got this beautiful wispy vegetation here and then the bank it's got these kind of a log it's got rocks I'm not probably not going to concern myself with that too much today I just think I more focused in on the color and the dynamics of the values I do want this to turn that corner because I think it's, I want, I want my viewer to, to meander through my piece here. So, oh, yeah, thank you. I got to put my hair up. All right. So I'm just getting some fun stuff in here. Tim asks, what, new, no blue spruce? <laughs> Tim says, no blue spruce? Not today! I know. Miracle on miracles. I did say I was, sometimes I have to push myself, do something different. And of course, that's the Create a Color Monolith. Yes, this pencil is a create a color monolith. I like it. Um, you know, when you're on pastel paper or any kind of drawing surface, that it has this tactile, very strong tactile uh, um, uh, element to it, and I just love the way I love the way this feels in my hand, and I love the the gesture of them so I just I'm crazy about these pencils okay so now also another question somebody asks mm -hmm. why weight pastel mat on watercolor underpainting thumbnails the four that you did oh why waste oh it wasn't a waste 
Yeah. No wasting. Making art is not wasting. This, this saved me, um, not didn't save me. This was a creative space. So I'm going to allow myself materials for exploration and permission pieces and cr creativity. Um, it's not all about that finished thing. Um, so, yeah, I give myself permission to um, use materials in those kinds of ways. If I don't, then I don't get better. I get to, I only stay in the same spot. That's why you have to experiment on that specific kind of paper because the papers behave differently. Yeah, because if I if all this if I exper I could experiment on say um, you know some other kind of paper, but it's not going to give me the same result. It's like when in my workshops I I have people um, we do some warm up exercises and I always have people do those warm ups on on sanded paper and I know it's um, uh, expensive it is you know um, but it's not a waste because um, the the marks that you make on on pastel mat or Wallace or any of the sanded paper is com it's completely utterly different than when you're on um, say a Canton or a sketch paper, a cheap, cheaper paper. So that mileage that you, you, you gain from experience on the better paper is sort of, it's, a di it's not the same. So it's, um, yeah. So you know that old saying, I paint like a millionaire? Well, yeah. It's apt. So I'm looking at what I did. I'm using some of what I did. When I get up here, I'm gonna. Um, I really like. I really like this one. So in this case, I'm. You know, I'm. I'm using that photo reference as a as a, a guide. A little. I'm making a little nod to it, but I'm not stuck on it. And you often use um, alcohol and pastel washes, correct? I, I do that too. Yep, I, I, I like that too. I like, so the question was, do, do, do I often use um, alcohol? I, you can, you know, well, pastel is water soluble, so you can come in and just use pastel and move it around and get a cool underpainting going if you want. There's all kinds of possibilities. You know, really, it's just a matter of letting yourself, letting yourself play, having that um, chance to experiment and um, test things out, try things out. I love this quinacridone gold. It's just such a neat color. Again, getting a little bit of that space around the corner here. Now, um, you do 
not have a source for Wallace paper, correct? No, I do not have a source for Wallace paper anymore. Um, I used to, and yeah, I, I wish I did. What do you think is the best replacement for Wallace paper? There's nothing that's exactly the, what the question is. What's the best? What do I think? What do I think is the best replacement for Wallace paper? And I, I don't think there is one that's exact. Um, obviously, um, I, I, um, I, there isn't. Um, you, there's you are there's I like pastel matte a lot you know obviously been using it a lot um, no there isn't it's a little sad okay so I like that okay all right now we need the hair dryer Okay, it's going to be loud. Okay. Okay. Okay, watch out, you guys. Oh, it looks pretty good. It's fun. Okay, awesome. Now, check this out. Look at how much lighter it dried. And the intensity just like it, it went away. It looks so close to this one um, com co compared to when I started out. So I think that that's really something to keep in mind. Now, all these interesting blooms and things that I obviously wouldn't be getting if I didn't um, do this underpainting. Some of these edges up here, the way these colors meet one another, the way there's this kind of natural gradation, I really love that. Now, so my, my thing here is to decide, in this particular case, this, this photo reference has a ton of contrast. This is very dark area. In, and actually, in um, I, I don't usually do this, but in this case, I went into Photoshop and masked off this l one little section and lightened up this area in Photoshop, so it's even darker in the original photo. I don't think I want that. I, I think I want a situation that's more like this, so much more overall high key. So I'm not probably, I, I have to hold myself from being tempted by those Terry Ludwig eggplants, which if I was painting this in a really um, faithful representational way, I would definitely like want to head to these. So I'm not, I'm going to try, try not to do that and see what, if I can pull something off that is overall higher key. So let's see what happens here with the pastel. So if, if that's the case, what, what, do, I, what do I want to put down in, in this area? I start, um, I see how I'm in the middle of my um, palette? So maybe the darkest thing. So if I'm going to stay high key, I want to be over here, here, down. I don't, I don't want to be grabbing this stuff. 
That's a no-no. That's my no zone if I want to stay to this kind of situation. So what's the darkest thing that I'm going to go for? And, you know, I, I grab this. That's a really pretty, very, very neutral thing. Let's see in there, and it's very close to what's there. So that's, that's pretty neat. That kind of works. It's a little cool. So just to get some of these shadow shapes, a little bit of the bank under there. Now, that, that's pretty good. Um, now, that um, river, it's that kind of dark brown. But again, I want to stick with a situation that's more like that overall. Even this is a little, you know, darker. See how it's darker than that. So... Maybe even get a little lighter. So I'm really playing with the, the reference in the photo here. I'm really pushing and experimenting. Now, maybe it'd be fun to get something a little more red down here, maybe not quite, I, I still need to go lighter. Oh, this paper's got some etching to it. The, the pastel mat's got some, I love that that's going on in there. I'll let there be some idea of that cast shadow in there. Now I'm going to move over here to my this foliage over here. There's so much color going on in here in these in these this um, vegetation. There's yellow and green, and I see a little little pinky purple cast in here. There's all these like very lovely kind of neutrals that um, are really fun to play with, but I, again, I want to stay in that light value range. Even that's kind of dark, but let's see. That's nice. Okay. Um, that's, I need something a little, I need another dark. This is a little bit different than this. So I've got this, this kind of purpley gray, and this is a little cooler. It's a little bluer. It's a right, see, see how they're right about the same value though? Boom, they're the same value almost exactly. So I know I'm in the right ballpark value-wise that I want to be. And see the etching? See that? I love that. That is the pencil line. And I'm coming over the pencil line really softly with a, with a, uh, a wash of the pastel. And I'm picking up the, the etching in the paper of the pencil line. I just think that's so cool. Right. I'm 
got to stick really light in value if I'm if I'm going to be faithful to my idea trying to stick with my idea Does it feel dark to people? No. Oh. Okay. It's such a bright sunny day here. Okay. So just coming around this edge, it's really want I want the most contrast is happening right there. And I'm going to get some kind of suggestion of these rocks in here, but really just a suggestion is all I need. I just I don't want to overdo these rocks. It's, my painting has really not very much to do with them. Some idea that there's an edge to the bank. Oh, we really need that much more light today, eh? All right. Okay, I got a lot, lot going on here. I need a little more contrast, I think. Just a little bit. A little bit more. Just trying some stuff out here. That'll work. Okay, now I'm going to move back because I need to decide on what's going on here, whether any of this is really working, and I don't know until I get some, something in that background. So I'm going to start out with this mountain shape and see what, what's what with that. A little negative painting gets me that grass right there. What do I do here? I love that sort of aqua. It's so pretty. It's so interesting. Will that work for me if I come in here? It's very close to the study. It's pretty cool. Can bring some of it down in here. That's nice. That's pretty cool. Then this purple gets to come into play. It gets to play with these rocks. And that's pretty awesome. I like that. All right. I'm loving the texture that's happening. You know, it's starting, it's just starting to emerge.
Now, I need to get something in for sky. Maybe down here too. And I'm thinking maybe something a little bit like this for the water, the cat, the shadow in the water. It just feels like it's thirsty for something like this. These marks, little grasses popping out of the shadow. And um, there's a little idea that there's a bank. I'm going to jump into my neutral section. edges of the rocks. Again, just kind of a suggestion of them, not... Yeah. All right. Now, got to get the sky... I'm, 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 I'm procrastinating on getting that sky in. I know that's going to really help me out. But I, I, I really think it's kind of interesting, and I'm liking what's going on. It's different. Here's a compliment rather than a question. Uh -huh. um, somebody says that you're one of the best colorists that they've ever seen. Oh, which well, really that's, that's, thank you. It's very sweet. We will be working on a color workshop. For you yes, guys. we will. Color and workshop on the way. And I'm working on a color guide that will be, be able to download Color really is a matter of, um, to me, just being, just letting yourself be playful with it and just really like experimenting. I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm like, okay, what, what's going to work? And just, I'm not afraid of this stuff. I'm not afraid of painting. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's, it's just, it's just paint. I, I know it, it does. It, painting, it takes a, like, a little certain kind of bravery to put yourself out there, I guess, but um, it's not, um, yeah, it's, it's fun. That's nice, a little pink in there. All right, now I know that I'm going to get that sky in there and it's going to pop. And it's also, um, I also have in mind something a little different today that you guys are going to probably, the guys that know me are probably going to go, what? I think this guy wants a blue sky. And I know 
that's so unusual for me, but I think it wants blue. And so, isn't that weird? I think it wants a dark blue. I think it wants not that. Okay, so what's this? Look at, look at that. See that? I picked up this kind of middle aqua right in there put it on here look at how dark it is but for, in order to get that I have to come to the lighter one and that's still that's more like it I I think a big um, mistake that often make and I see students make a lot is get the sky too dark and even this to me the sky is really dark I'm not going to put in this distant mountain. I don't think it needs it. I love this edge, this stuff happening on the edge. It's really, really interesting. Okay, now I've got this, and now I need to get this in here, right? So Maureen comments that um, she'd have no problem with experimenting freely if um, the pastels weren't so expensive, and that's a good point. One way to experiment with color, though, is definitely uh, watercolor. Yeah, yeah, so right, it is cheaper. Watercolor is cheaper. Yeah, I, I, I understand your dilemma. And none of this is particularly um, um, thrifty, is it? Um, the, 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 the issue of, of materials and plain. But I, but I do feel, I, I still really maintain that um, giving yourself space to um, experiment and play, it is the way to get better. It, it, it is the path to get better, or one of, one, of, one of the ways. Because otherwise you end up doing the same thing over and over again. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, I um, I got a few more things that I have to do here. I want a little bit of action back here. And there's you know such a difference between using. Um, student grade materials, even in watercolor, there's such a um, profound difference in the quality of the result you're going to get when you're using um, student grade versus artist grade stuff. So some glazing going on here. Um, I'm, I, I don't like the sky. This is why I always say <laughs> not a blue sky, because I don't like it. Okay, now I have a little work, because I did that, I have a little work to do here on this edge.
but I do like the yellow better. Oh yeah, that's better. Other questions? <laughs> uh, on the issue of being thrifty with your paints, yeah. um, Martha quotes a friend of hers who said, we are not here to save the paint, the paint is here to save us. Oh, whoa. That's a heck of a quote. That's a great quote. So say that again. I'll say it again so make sure everybody I'll hears that one. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, Martha says that her friends uh, is quoted saying, we are not here to save the paint. The paint is here to save us. Yeah, oh boy, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. It's really, and so profoundly true. I, I know for myself, um, most all the good things in my life that are good for me, Ha um, have happened happen when I'm painting. So I know that you know it's never a waste. It's never a waste. If I'm out here doing this, it doesn't really. Everything else is falls into place. profoundly true for me. So that's kind of coming together a little bit. Let's see. Um, Ms. Tigerbaum says that it was really helpful to see you change something that you didn't like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not, you know, it, same thing with, yeah, she said it was helpful to see me change something I didn't like. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't always get it on the money. And uh, this kind of thing is especially, you know, I'm, I'm pushing and pulling and experimenting and seeing what's going to happen. And... And I'm also, you know, not afraid to see, to, to be up here doing this and see you, let you guys see me. Um, I don't, right now, I don't feel like I'm struggling. I feel like I'm, it's fun. It's, it's you know, I'm, I'm finding my way to this painting. It's, show, it's showing me the way. It's not an, an answer, and I don't want any my paintings to ever be a formula. You know, there's a process that's that's helpful to think about, uh, definitely, um, and a process that that I can rely on. And but I don't want it to. It's not a formula. or a, a, a method, per se. I want to do um, something to those trees. I want... Um, I'm going to settle that, green, that emerald green back just a little, letting some of it pop through. Right, but so that it's not the that emerald green of that tree line. I didn't want. I don't want. That's not the story. It's not the whole. It's part of the story, but it's not the whole story.
push this mountain shape back a little bit, lighten up that value of it. So what, what I am pleased about with this painting is that I, you know, I, I started out with an idea over here. And while it's not I exact, I, I, I feel like I got some of what I was interested in. And that, that always pleases me if, I, if, I, if I'm able to, you know, see, follow through on, a, uh, on an idea to whatever degree. Sometimes the painting takes you on a, on a journey that is unexpected, but um, sometimes, sometimes I get to, it gets to hold a, a little true. So we have another question. Mm -hmm. uh, can you just do a quick overview of glazing when it comes to pastel? So glazing, a quick overview of glazing. I don't know if I can do a quick overview of glazing. So glazing is um, basically you're, you're dragging one layer over another, and you can do it in a lot of ways with pastel. Um, you know, one, one thing I can do, this is a harder new pastel, and I, that, could be, that could be said to be glazing over the thicker, um, more... Uh, um, uh, uh, softer layers with a harder pastel. You can you can do it th the other way around. It's just um, I d I think I do have a couple tutorials that um, talk about glazing in depth. So rather than just a direct stroke, it's more more of a, almost like a wash, transparent wash. Yeah, I like this guy. So um, this painting, it's um, going to be available for sale on Daily Paintworks after I'm done. Um, we'll p post it about, it'll take me about an hour or so to get it up on Daily Paintworks. I am going to do just a couple other things. And then I feel like it's just about there. I like how it turned out. Just some idea of a little bit more water movement. Could pick at it. I, I don't want to pick at it too much. What would you say is the focal point of this piece? Right, right there. I think that what what the question is, what would I say is the focal point of this piece? Right, right in here. I don't. Um, sometimes a painting will have a really, really strong focal point. Others not as much. I, I don't think that it's necessary for every painting to have, you know, the a, a, a super defined focal point. As long as there's visual interest and you're leading your viewer um, through the painting, I think this does that pretty effectively. You know, you don't always get you don't always get everything in every painting, and I don't know if that it's totally necessary. There are plenty of abstract paintings that have overall patterns that don't necessarily have a strong focal point, but still um, have plenty of visual interest.
this guy's actually coming together kind of nice. It's kind of a sweet little, little um, thing. Kind of like it. Okay. I think I'm just about there for today. Um, let's put some. Let's put a, a mat around it because I think that will really show it off. I want to do a couple little things up here. Well, where's the? Where's my? <laughs> I still haven't cut a nice mat. <laughs> I'll try. It's really. Um, yeah, ooh, that's interesting. I like it. I like the softness of it. It has a it has a feeling of that bright, you know, m the mood of bright sunny day and the texture in here I think turned out really good. Really well. Um, okay, so a little bit different today, but um, I think that it's good to see that there's plenty of um, pathways to a f finished painting. It doesn't always have to be exactly the same. You can really um, have, I, I, I guess what I feel like is that I have a lot of tools in my toolbox and I can employ them um, differently, the, meaning different kinds of underpaintings, different kinds of papers, and, and also different intent in a painting. Sometimes the intention is much more here I've got this photo reference and I'm going to get to the end fairly faithfully. Other times it's not. And other times a reference is, is something to help you along um, and to get, get you into the painting and, and then the painting then uh, drives your choices. And I think this was a little bit of both actually. So, Okay, so um, remember to subscribe. And remember to visit um, paintinglessonswithmarla.com and check out our uh, lessons and workshops there. And um, again, thanks so much for joining me this afternoon. I hope you're well and happy painting. All right, see you guys soon. Bye.